Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Somebody sent me an interesting article. It was in israeltoday.co.il as the website. I'll post the links. And uh, the headline is, Israeli rabbi says he's already holding meetings with the Messiah, their Messiah. And then there's another article, Gaga Magog, Russia warns Israel of war over Syria. Ah, well, more on that later. So, uh, let's see. The article's written by uh, August 3rd, 2020, by a guy named Ryan Jones. Claims to be a Christian. Yeah, he's like, uh, he must be friends with uh, John Hagee. Uh, and it sounds like his Christ is the Messiah that the rabbi is talking about. Because looking at some of the headlines of some of his stories, uh, you know, are Arabs and Christians mistreated over there? Oh, no, no, no. Those terrible Christians, they're just whining about nothing, you know. Just because they're having their churches bulldozed, you know. I mean, you know, they're whining over nothing. Uh, I forget when, I think it was in the 90s. I was reading that an average of three churches a week were being bulldozed over you-know-where by the you-know-whos. Uh, I don't even think there's many churches left anymore over there. They've gotten rid of them all. So, honestly, the garbage that they're te teaching in the churches over here in the United States, I wish they'd bulldoze them here, too, starting with John Hagee's and uh, Billy Graham's or uh, former church and uh, Copeland and a few of the other uh, wonderful and I use that term sarcastically, people. So the headline is, Israeli rabbi says he's already holding meetings with Messiah. It says, their biggest uh, rabbis are all afraid to leave the country lest they meet, miss, lest they miss Messiah's coming. Um, I'm just going to paraphrase this. If you want to, you can read it. Because I don't want to get caught uh, in trouble for um, copyright infringement. So there's a is on is the Israeli radio. There was uh, some rabbis that uh, were telling everybody that the Messiah is getting ready to proclaim his arrival to save us from those horrible Christians and Muslims. Uh, that's the Bob translation. Rabbi Yaakov Zisholtz uh, told, uh, let's see, Religious Broadcaster Radio 2000, that Rabbi Chaim Kenevsky recently told him uh, he's already in direct contact with their Messiah. And that Kenivsky, or whatever his name is, is considered one of the two or three uh, most influential rabbis of the Kabbalah Club. They call them Orthodox, but um, Bible-believing Jews do not consider them to be uh, Orthodox. They're considered those mystical concealed rabbis. Yeah, the Kabbalah Club. Uh, Zisholtz, uh, I'm going to quote him. Quote, The process of redemption is about to start happening very quickly and at a fast pace. It is important that people remain calm and steady to act properly in the right time. Unquote. And then new quote, Quote, there is a potential Messiah in every generation. And there are righteous men who know precisely who it is. This is, of course, true in this generation. Unquote. 
Another quote. Quote, getting the word out now that the Messiah is closer than ever is a matter of life and death. Haven't you heard of Gog and Magog? That is what is going to happen very soon. Right now, the situation is explosive more than you could possibly imagine. Everyone needs to know whether they are on the inside or they're going to be left out. Unquote. Uh, so he explained that there was a, a bunch of signs, maybe lying wonders and miracles. I don't know which uh, the important rabbis have taken note of and that they firmly believe to be evidence of their coming Messiah. Now, uh, let me give you some takes on this. I have studied virtually all the world's major religions. Uh, the one that I know the least about is Islam. And reason I didn't do much with Islam is because, well, to them, Jesus is just a prophet. And Muhammad is even a greater prophet than Jesus, per their, their uh, inman, their scholars, because he came after Jesus. He had to fix what uh, the Christians all messed up. So, uh, yeah, that's what they believe. However, I have studied it a little bit. Now, Islam believes that there's going to be a, a type of what Christians, what we call an anti-Christ or an anti-Muslim. But then the real Messiah will come and destroy that one. So they kind of believe that there's going to be an Antichrist and then the true Messiah will come and destroy that one. But the thing is, they don't, they, they say they believe it's Jesus, but I think they have another Jesus, but that's just me. So they're looking for a false Messiah and then their Messiah that they're going to think is real. Christians think something along the same lines. They're, they teach that there's going to be an Antichrist, and then Jesus will come back and destroy that one. Now, if the you-know-whos want uh, the Muslims and the Christians to fall in line, maybe they could pull something like that. I don't know. You know, maybe the devil will pull something along the that line i don't know maybe there'll be a false messiah before the real false messiah because let me tell you what if the muslim imams the pope and all your christ uh, uh christian flavored tv preachers uh all proclaimed a messiah had come i mean virtually everybody's going to fall in line i mean let's face it uh, there'll be very, very, very few people that would uh, say, no, nope, wrong one. Especially those in the West that uh, believe in a pre-trib rapture. They'll end up denying Christ in a heartbeat. I know they will. Uh, but that's just kind of a an educated guess. You know, like I say, I don't claim to be a prophet. Um, and... Uh, but the thing is, they're claiming that the Gog and Magog war against Israel is going to come from Turkey and or Russia. Um, but what's funny is 90-something percent of all the so-called you-know-whos over there in the Middle East that speak Yiddish, which is a made-up language, it's, that's, Yiddish is not Hebrew. It, the letters look like Hebrew, it sounds like Hebrew, but if you hand somebody that knows Yiddish a Hebrew Old Testament, they can't read it. Oh, they might pretend to, you know, but they can't read it. And if you ask them to con uh, translate it into English or something, they can't do it. It's all, it's a show. But the thing is, the, those great majority of those Yiddish speakers, guess where they're from? Eastern Europe. 
They're from Poland, Ukraine, Russia, Germany. That's where they're from. You know, they are Gog and Magog. That's what they are. The land is all, their land has already been invaded by Gog and Magog. And the thing is, is if you're looking for Russia to invade the Israeli state, you need to take a look at, uh, get the book Behind Communism by author Frank Britton, B-R-I-T-T-O-N. And then look up the names of the many communist uh, leaders in a 1925 Jewish encyclopedia. Enjoy. Yeah, Behind Communism by Frank Britton. Thing is, um, when I started telling people about this, oh, I don't know, a bunch of years ago, you could find the 1925 encyclopedia online. Now, you can't find it. So if you look in a 1906 Jewish encyclopedia, that was before the Russian Revolution, their names are not in there. You can't find it anymore. But uh, let's just say that 90% of all the leaders were uh, of the communist revolution that murdered millions of Christians were uh, Yiddish speakers, if you catch my drift. Stalin, his children spoke Yiddish. And guess where they ended up after uh, World War II? The United States. And guess what? Hitler's family also came to the United States. I mean, really? Why? Why did they end? Why did the United States protect them, bring them here, and have give them a name change? Why? And why did Stalin's kids come here? You know, his family. Why? What the? You know, and all this stuff is missing. It disappears from the history book. Uh, you know, it's just it's unbelievable. So. You know, the thing is, with this uh, so-called Corona beer thing going on, uh, companies are going bankrupt. People are losing their jobs. People are going to be losing their homes. They're not going to have any money. Uh, they're supposed to be all kinds of... Uh, they're closing food processing plants. There's crop failures. Uh, things are going to get bad. And maybe the Messiah is going to protect us. Oy vey, oh, the Messiah, he's going to protect us. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's going to protect us all right. Look into the Noahide laws, N-O-A-H-I-D-E. Look into the Noahide laws. And uh, every Christian, according to the people that wrote those laws, is guilty of the first law, which is idolatry, if you believe that Jesus Christ is God come in the flesh, you are guilty of idolatry. Penalty? Death. Method of execution? Beheading. Guess what? I read about that in the Bible. Yeah, really, I did. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded, that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Can I get an amen? And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And that's only the introduction. The first thousand years, that's only the introduction. Uh, you know, people, their Messiah is not our Messiah. Remember that. And if you're looking for the pre-trib rapture, you're going to be very, very disappointed. Now, remember this, people. I know I've said it a bunch of times, but this is possibly the most important thing you could ever know about the second coming. And this is another reason why uh, they always hate Paul. 
Paul gives so many warnings about the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the antichrist, whatever name you, he's called. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a secret rapture? No. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. If we're not caught up in the uh, clouds to meet the Lord in the air, it's the wrong Messiah. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Yeah. If uh, we're not flying up in the air in the clouds, it's the wrong Messiah. So, with that in mind, just remember, the Bible clearly teaches the false Christ comes first. And then when the rabbis proclaim the Messiah has come, uh, don't believe it. Matthew 24 even tells you that. When they tell you, oh, the Messiah is here in the secret place, don't believe it. He's in the desert, don't go. No. He's going to come in the clouds with glory. And we're going to be caught up together with him. Uh, you know, people, it's just, uh, it's unbelievable. What can I tell you? But uh, they're looking for their Messiah. So, check out the pictures. And Russia is not going to invade the Israeli state and do any damage. They might pretend... But Putin has been to the Wailing Wall many times. He's got his own rabbi, his own personal rabbi. And from what I understand, Putin's family were, uh, worked for Stalin. And Putin is, uh, is or was a KGB agent, a colonel. You know, a colonel is a very high-ranking military officer rank. You got lieutenant, captain, major, colonel. The only thing that's above a colonel is a general. That's the only thing above a colonel. It's like one of the top ranks. You don't get to be a colonel in the KGB by being a dummy and by not playing the game. So, what can I tell you? All right, everybody. Uh, just keep that stuff in mind. I don't know how long I'm going to be on YouTube, but uh, Lord's protecting the channel for as long as, uh, you know, for a while. I'm also on BitChute, and, uh, you know, har I don't have hardly any, the number of uh, videos on BitChute that I have on YouTube, but every once in a while I'll post something on bit shoot that I'm afraid to post on YouTube. So keep that in mind. All right. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus. In his precious name. Amen.